Hey everyone, Sam here. Thanks for joining me. Hope you're having a beautiful day wherever you are in the world. Well, it's summer here in New Zealand and the weather is absolutely stunning right now. It's been really sunny, especially for the last few days. And for me, it's been an opportunity to get outside painting because I love being out in the sun. So when it's really sunny, I don't really want to be in my studio. So in this video, I'm going to show you a quick plein air painting that I did a few evenings ago of the marina behind me. And I've been getting out quite a bit in my local area recently and just painting some local scenes, which is just helping my painting skills all around. Because painting outdoors helps you to paint more quickly, but it also helps you to see colours and values in the landscape much better. Also, you can use your little studies for larger paintings as reference material, or you can even add more details to them when you get back into the studio, which is what I often do. So in this video, I'm just gonna quickly show you the process of the plain air painting that I did, which probably only took me about an hour and a half. Anyway, sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. The marina that I'm painting is located in the Bay of Islands area in far north New Zealand. It's a really beautiful area and very inspiring, so I'm going to be out painting here a lot more often over the next few months. I'm painting on a 6 inch by 8 inch linen panel. Now, whilst these panels are quite small, they're still actually a decent size if you just want to do a quick plain air painting in the evening, for example, when you don't have a lot of light left and you need to get the information down quickly. So I really like painting on this size. Now these are pre-made panels made by a company called canvaspanels.com in the USA. Now when I painted this view I didn't really think about it too much, I just thought yeah that looks nice and I just quickly plonked myself down, got my easel set up and all my gear and started to paint. I probably had about an hour and a half, two hours of daylight left. But the main thing for this painting is just to capture the mood and atmosphere of the evening. So not worry too much about detail, but just making sure that I'm nailing those colours and values in the scene. So the first thing I do is I sketch out my composition and I'm using a number zero round brush with burnt sienna mixed with liquid original. Now as I'm using oil paint, liquid original is especially advantageous because it not only thins the paint, but it also speeds up the drying time as well. Now I mainly use oil paint, but you could just as easily paint this type of scene in acrylics if you wanted to. I'll just quickly go over the colours I'm using, which includes titanium white, burnt sienna, yellow oxide, cadmium yellow, cadmium orange, quinacridone crimson, ultramarine blue and phthalo green. So this is a pretty simple palette. In fact, I pretty much use this palette for everything. So this includes plain air paintings and my studio paintings. For my brushes, I'm mainly using a range of number two, three and five flat brushes, number three filbert brushes and number zero round brushes. I'm also using a number zero synthetic round for some of those finer details in the boat. So anyway, once I've sketched out the composition, the first thing I do is identify where my shadows are in the scene, which are the darkest values. And in this particular case, with the evening light the way it is and the sun moving quickly, I need to get those shadows down as quick as possible, and then that way it doesn't matter that the light's going to change. I started off by painting the tree shadows first, and these are going to be the darkest shadows in this particular landscape and that's because we'll find our darkest darks in the foreground whereas in the distance the darks are not as dark as the value scale narrows. So here I'm mixing ultramarine blue with a little bit of yellow oxide and this is going to create a very dark greenish blue colour. I like using this colour mix for painting trees because trees are some of the darkest values you'll find in the landscape but it means my shadows will still have a green cast to them. Now for those trees in the midground, I've just mixed in a little bit of titanium white just to make the value lighter. Just a little bit lighter so you can see that the midground headland there is sitting in the midground and not jumping forward into the foreground. 
Now as I'd already used ultramarine blue and yellow oxide in my shadow mix, I was able to use it for the shadow of the tree reflection in the water, as that reflection is quite dark. But what I've done here is I've mixed in more yellow oxide and also some burnt sienna, so we've got a kind of greenish brown colour. I then paint the distant land masses with a mix of ultramarine blue, a little bit of burnt sienna, some quinacridone crimson and some titanium white. As these distant land masses are far away, the darkest shadows are going to be much lighter than the shadows in the foreground, so keep this in mind when you're painting landscapes. So now I've got my shadows in and this is just going to set a whole tonal dynamic for the painting. So I work back and then I start painting the sky. There's barely a cloud in the sky and it's a nice sunny summer evening so we're going to keep it simple. And here all I've done is just mix titanium white with some ultramarine blue. Now one thing I have done is as I've gotten nearer to the horizon the value of the sky has gotten much lighter but there was also some yellowish crimson tones in the distance so what I've done is I've mixed a very small amount of yellow oxide and a small amount of quinacridone crimson into my mix. I've also added a lot more titanium white but it's very subtle. I move on to painting the water and it's got a nice kind of bluish turquoise cast to it. So I mix ultramarine blue with some yellow oxide, some titanium white and then also a little bit of phthalo green which is just a beautiful colour for using in water. It's especially good for seascapes as well. All the while when I'm painting this I'm keeping in mind the value of the water and also making sure that those colours are not too saturated and I can knock them back with titanium white. I've left some gaps here for the trees that are casting a shadow over the water. And when painting reflective water we've got two things going on here. We've got the reflection to the trees but then we've also got the shadows being cast by the trees as well. So here we're losing some of that greenness in the water and it's a much cooler blue. So I've mixed ultramarine blue with a little bit of burnt sienna which just desaturates it a bit. And then I've mixed in some titanium white. Now even though this is a plain air painting, if I was going to block this in in the studio I'd do it in exactly the same way. However, plain air painting is a really great thing to do and it will quickly improve your painting skills. Plus it's nice to just get out the studio and get outside in the fresh air and in the sunshine anyway. Another way you can improve your painting skills is by hitting that like button and subscribing to my channel. I'm going to be making loads more videos on painting water and local scenes, landscapes, mountains, seascapes and all sorts. I also teach art theory in the context of the paintings that I'm working on as well, so you can learn it as you watch through my videos. Cool stuff! Anyway, let's get back into the painting. So the main thing I'm doing at the moment is just blocking in these large masses, and some of the pine trees are in the full sunlight, so I'm going to be painting those areas in light. Pine trees generally have quite dark green foliage, so for this I've mixed yellow oxide with some cadmium yellow and ultramarine blue and then I've also mixed in a little bit of cadmium orange as well. If I need to adjust the value I can mix in some titanium white. So now I've got the major masses in the painting established I'm going to work on the boats. As this is a small painting I'm not going to go mad with the details on the boat in fact Really the boats have hardly got any detail in them at all, but I'm just getting in the general forms of them and their orientation towards the sunlight. Whilst lots of the hulls of the boats are white, I don't use straight titanium white. I mix in a little bit of burnt sienna in there as well, which just warms it up and gives that white a subtle orange cast to it. So I paint in the hulls of the boats and then for that boat in the foreground I've also mixed in a bit of yellow oxide as it was kind of a creamy colour. Now I've made that boat larger as it's providing a focal point in the scene. Another thing I've done is to make sure I've avoided having any of the boats or anything in the centre of the painting as this would spoil the composition. I've also made sure that the horizon line is not in the centre either and I've gone for a lower horizon in this composition. I've added a few other little details in the boats such as windows and shadows as well. 
And at this point in the painting, I've established the major zones, values and colors in the painting. So now I'm just gonna go back over it and start restating the darks and just going over the painting and tidying up areas and adding a few more details. The cool thing about using Liquid Original out in the field is by this point in my painting, it had already started to set a little bit, so it means I can work some thicker paint over the top. So here I add another layer of paint to the tree shadows, which is just gonna make it much darker now that the under layers started to dry a little bit. I'm still using the same colors that I was using just a moment ago, a mix of ultramarine blue with some yellow oxide. I've also mixed in a little bit of titanium white and a little bit of phthalo green in places, just to add some texture to the foliage that's in shadow on the side of the cliff there. I use a number zero synthetic round brush to start painting a few finer details on the boat that's in the foreground, such as the upper edge of the hull. Once I've worked on this, I then start painting some ripples on the water and these are going to be much darker, so I've mixed ultramarine blue with a small amount of yellow oxide. I'm applying the paint with a number three filbert brush as that rounded edge is going to be really good for painting those ripples. This painting is getting close to being finished and I just add a few more details into the vegetation that's in shadow on the left side of the painting. And I'm just tidying up some of these areas in general. I then add a few highlights to the water that's in the full sunlight and this is going to help communicate movement and motion within the water. It's the same colours that I was using before, a mix of ultramarine blue with yellow oxide, a little phthalo green but I've used much more titanium white. I really like the way this painting is coming together and I think I'll probably put it on my website which I've got just to showcase my artworks at samuelfineart.com. Now I built this website on the Portfolio Box platform, so if you're an artist or creative and you're looking to make your own website then check out PortfolioBox.net where you can create your own beautiful website to showcase your art. And right now Portfolio Box are offering a 50% discount on any of their plans for the first year by typing in the discount code SAMERP50 and I've put the link to their website and the discount code in the description box below. I finish up this painting by adding more details to the boats that are in the midground, things like painting the windows and the masts. I also added a couple of subtle clouds that are in the distance in the sky and a couple of seagulls as well, which just adds a bit of life to the painting. Now quite often when I've been painting outdoors, I usually add a few more details to them in the studio, but with this particular painting, I didn't really feel that I needed to. There was just a couple of minor things that I needed to tidy up, just mainly the shape of the boat in the foreground, but this was only a small thing to do. I was really quite happy with the way this painting was. Now it's great painting these little 6x8 studies because you can do them quickly, so it's perfect if you want to have an evening plain air paint or early in the morning as well when you've got that softer light. I could also use this painting as a study for a larger artwork, which I may well do. I'm definitely going to come back to the marina and paint more of these boat scenes. I'm really enjoying painting them. Now if you want to learn more about painting landscapes then check out the painting resources I have on my website at samuelerp.com and also check out the full length painting tutorial videos that I have on my website and you can also view my full length painting tutorial videos by subscribing to me on Patreon. And what I'm doing with Patreon is I'm turning it into a huge painting resource for anybody that wants to learn how to paint. So whether you're a complete beginner or you're a more advanced painter, there's something for everyone on Patreon. And I also provide reference photos and written notes as well if you want to copy the paintings that are in the lessons. Anyway, I've put all the details in the description box below. So I hope you enjoyed this painting, stay tuned for the next video, I hope you have a beautiful day and I shall see you next time.